In the last video, I showed how codes in Shakespeare can be found using letters in Greek and Latin. In Monus Hieroglyphica, John Dee refers to Hebrew, Greek, and Latin as the primary alphabets of the three languages. It mentions how we need to consider the numerical values and shapes of the letters. Applying the idea that a letter's shape can be significant, I showed how the message God, De Vere, and Francis Bacon appears at the beginning of Shakespeare's second published work, Lucrece. Some who saw the video disagreed with the method I demonstrated, so I put together this follow-up showing another example which I think should settle the matter. I explained some of this in an earlier video, but have since figured out there's more to it. The message appears as an acrostic in the first part of Henry IV in Shakespeare's first folio. It's on page 47, misprinted as 49. Years ago, I saw researcher Peter Amundsen point out the name Bacon in the left margin, but later on, I figured out another way to spell it. Petter has it spelled F-B-A-C-O and suggests that we then read the line toward the right. The small letter U can be read as an upside-down letter N, making the acrostic spell F-Bacon. I think this is only partially correct because, even though D does show how letters can be rotated to make new ones, when we focus on the primary alphabets and their shapes, it reveals another set of codes in the margin. Hebrew is one of the primary alphabets, and in video 38, I show how the Hebrew letter A or Aleph resembles the shape of a letter N. Even though I'd thought of that independently, I found some mathematicians on a website years ago discussing the same idea, that the Hebrew Aleph and letter N look similar. So it's not just me who thinks this. Alright, now what's going on is, in the last video, I showed how the letter L in Greek, Lambda, resembles a letter A. And when the Latin L is replaced with the Greek L, the acrostic now appears to read F-R-B-A, the first two letters of the name Francis Bacon. It's the same with the Bacon acrostic in Henry IV. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin are the primary alphabets, and just like a Latin letter A resembles a Greek lambda, a Hebrew letter A looks like a Latin letter N. Just like with Lucrece, where a Greek letter replaces a Latin letter A, here a Hebrew letter replaces the letter A. The acrostic now spells bacon without having to read into the line. The reason I'm sure that I'm right about using the Hebrew Aleph for the letter N is because when we spell Bacon's name the way I'm presenting, it then opens up the entire left margin and we get another set of codes previously unseen. Continuing upwards from the name Bacon, we get these letters highlighted in blue. The first three are the letters T-W-M. Looking at the letter M from the Greek alphabet, the Greek lowercase m resembles the letter u. In fact, the Greek letter m is called mu or mu, and I wonder if it's because an upper and lowercase m side by side look like they're spelling mu. Alright, like before, we're focusing on the shape of the letter. Replacing the Latin letter m with a Greek letter m, lowercase, this acrostic appears to spell t-w-u. We know that T-W-O isn't pronounced TWO. The W is silent and it's pronounced TWO. It's the same with T-W-U. The W is silent and it would also be pronounced TWO. After TWO, continuing upwards, is a letter I. What's going on here is, as you know, printers use the same character for the letter I as the Roman numeral for one. In video 42, I showed something I found in The Merry Wives of Windsor, page 59, misprinted as 51. When you count all the single letter I's on the page, the 17th is printed here. Again, this letter I, which looks like a 1, is the 17th on the page. It's part of a series of words that, when you put them all together, spells 17 Oxford. 
There are some other things on the line which I explained in the video, but the point is that we counted 17 letter I's or Roman numeral 1's to get here. From the beginning of this page of Henry IV, this letter I is the second one on the page, so we count it as 2. So we have 2 spelled T-W-U followed by the second letter I counted as 2, and if we keep reading upwards, the next letter spell T-W-O. That's three times in the margin we have a reference to 2. To make things a little more clear, I replaced the spellings of the word 2 with the actual number, 222. Two, two. After the three twos, the remaining letters are B, T. Here we refer to the numerical values of the letters. The value of the letter B is equivalent to 2. Replacing that letter B with 2, its numerical equivalent, it's then followed by the last letter T. So reading upwards, the acrostic is 2, 2, 2, and ends with 2T. Two 2T two is another way of expressing two letter T's, the initials found in Shakespeare's sonnets, which I cover in video 55, and its addendum. Okay, now if you haven't noticed it yet, beneath the name Bacon is an acrostic spelling for T, beginning on line 17. Watching the videos of Alexander Waugh, I learned that 1740 is a number used to indicate Edward de Vere. So we have 2t and 4t and 3 twos. There's an article online by Baconian researcher Peter Dawkins where he mentions that t can stand for both 2 and 3, though unless I missed it, I don't recall an explanation for why this is. I have some ideas, but it would add a lot of runtime to this video and I want to keep it short. If you know where I can read about the exact reasons for why the letter T stands for both 2 and 3, please leave a comment because I'd like to know if the ideas I have are the same. Alright, so let's run with it. If 2 can stand for T, then this acrostic begins with 2T, then 3T, Bacon's name, and ends with 4T on line 17. I can only speculate on the meaning of these letter T's, and I have in other videos, but like I mentioned, I want to keep the runtime short. Apparently, they're a kind of Rosicrucian or Masonic signature, something for brothers of the order to identify, but I'm just pointing them out to show that design went into this. There's also more going on in this section of the page, some of which I cover in video 38. But the purpose of this video is to show how these shapes of letters from the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin alphabets are used to encode messages in Shakespeare. Just like at the beginning of Lucrece. Thanks again for watching, and I'll have another posted soon.